what are the risks of local recurrence? I know that you know the literature mentions a wide range, but what's your experience? Is it more common intraarticular, extraarticular? If you can walk us through that thought process, that will help. Uh, sure. Uh, so, for the recurrence rates are high, definitely high, definitely higher for diffuse disease than localized disease, and. The, the studies are a little bit all over the place in terms of what the exact numbers are. And part of that is probably because if you're looking at different joints, we have different ability to get out an adequate resection in different joints, uh, in different areas. Then we also think there's probably a spectrum of kind of aggressiveness. Uh, when you lump those together in different studies, you're gonna come up with all these different numbers. And then surgical technique matters also, you know, arthroscopic, uh, Arthroscopic resection for diffuse disease is probably not a good idea based on everything we know from the current studies. Uh, but then the question comes up as to whether it is a good idea for localized disease. And Dr. Kim brought up a very good point that, uh, you know, when, we, when you're doing a arthroscopic resection, in quotes, uh, many times what that means is actually just shaving the tumor down. And we know based on the, the mechanism of how this works, that there's sort of this paracrine kind of loop where uh, one tumor cell is sending out a signal that is then recruiting cells into the normal synovium. Uh, so shaving that down and spreading that, those, that tissue everywhere probably is not a great idea. And it has been borne out somewhat in the studies. Uh, initial studies did seem to suggest that localized disease, arthroscopic resection, open resection were about the same. Uh, but as larger studies come out now with uh, registry data and there are some international groups the uh, study groups for uh, TGCT, the, the data from those studies, which are much higher numbers, do suggest that even for localized disease, probably an open resection is better, uh, at least in univariate analysis, one study, um, but with much higher numbers. So my approach in general is that for lo even for localized disease, if the surgical resection is not particularly morbid, uh, like for instance, in most of the locations of the knee, you can do what's called a mini arthrotomy and just make a very small opening and sort of get your way to the, the uh, lesion and remove it. You know, that has very minimal uh, change in functional recovery versus a arthroscopic uh, procedure. So for those patients I, that I can do, I will do a mini arthrotomy. On the other hand, if it's something like uh, posterior disease or something very difficult to get to where extensive dissection is needed, you know, then I may turn to my arthroscopic colleagues and say, is this a, is this a lesion you can get to? Many of the times, those are areas that they can't get to either with a scope. Um, so you may have to plan out, you know, the, the surgical approach differently. How often do you see a relatively speaking, rapidly progressive course of the PBNS? You're following the patient, let's say every six months to a year, you have to then start following them every three months. What fraction of the patients would have, quote, what you would label as rapid growth for this disease entity? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I really think that there is a spectrum of disease, even within the category of diffuse disease. There are some patients that have diffuse disease and you do a resection and you never see them again and you know they have no problems. Uh, that's, that's the minority, but, uh, but that definitely exists. And then there are some patients that have, seem to have very aggressive disease and you can sort of get a sense, I think, even right from the beginning because when they present, the disease is much more extensive, like extraarticular and intraarticular components or much thicker disease, bulkier disease. You know, they've already presented with erosions in the bone uh, and local structures. So, you know, I would say the vast, the majority of people with diffuse disease, and again, this is coming mostly from knee experience, uh, is the majority of people will fall in that category where you do the resection and there's probably something on the order of 40% to 60% chance that over the next two years or so, we're, we'll see a recurrence. Uh, then there's that small 15% of remaining people that fall on either end where you do the resection and just never see it again, or you do the resection and three months later, you may already see disease coming back. Uh, so, but that, that's, the, that's the minority, but it, it does exist. Um, so it makes me feel like even for diffuse TGCT, there's still a pretty extensive spectrum. And I wonder if there could be some molecular basis to that also, but you know, that remains to be seen. Dr. Abraham, I just uh, so I can educate my patients better. Um, 
Uh, does the synovium regrow after you do a synovectomy, let's say in the knee? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and I don't know that we really know the answer, but in general, we think that no, it doesn't grow back and you may get some scarring and you may get some kind of replacement tissue in that area. Usually it's kind of fatty if you end up going back into that area, but we think generally it, it doesn't uh, really regrow completely back the way it was previously. So one of the questions we get commonly uh, from patients is, well, you know, you're going to cut out my synovium. Don't I need that? I never knew I had it, but don't I need it? <laughs> um, so, you know, the synovium does have function in normal joints and it helps lubricate the joint and it provides nutrients and there's uh, oxygen exchange and things like that that happen uh, for the joint through the synovium. But really all those functions in a normal joint, you probably only need a small percentage of your actual synovium. So maybe you need 10% of your, the actual synovium of your knee. Sure, it's much more efficient with a knee full of synovium, uh, but, but in, in order for that knee to function normally and, and function over time, you probably need five or 10%. And then looking at most of these joints, we really can't get out 100% anyway. So when we do a complete resection, complete resection in quotes again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're talking about taking out 85% of the synovia at, at best, and that's in, in the knee and other joints like the hip, you know, without a surgical dislocation, there's no way you can get 85% of the synovia out. Um, so, so the remaining synovium usually is adequate and most of it does, uh, it probably doesn't regrow. We may get some areas of regrowth, uh, but we don't see long-term problems from the synovectomy alone. Great Very good. Dr. Kim, any additional thoughts on the multiply recurrent, multiply operated, diffuse variant, uh, the sort of the so-called difficult patient, uh, anything else to add? Any special thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, the, uh, I, I think uh, in those patients, you really have to um, not jump into surgery. I, I think that you got to like really pump the brakes on that, on that decision and uh, really start to you know, uh, go back to your tumor board, go back to everybody and kind of discuss it uh, as a group. And I think that's where uh, institutions and areas that have seen a lot of this, uh, those channels have already been uh, created, uh, treating other sarcoma patients. And I think that's where those uh, multi-recurrent or multi-focal multi, uh, multi uh, recurrence uh, patients need to be triaged and uh, evaluated. Um, I think without that, you're, you know, as an orthopedic surgeon, you're like, yeah, I wanna go in and do something. I wanna like take this thing out. Uh, but I actually ultimately end up, I think, end up hurting patients if you don't take a more multidisciplinary approach to that. 